and we are in part three and we're ready for letter C, which is eight to the two thirds. Eight to the two thirds. Okay, now remember that anytime you have a fractional exponent, it is a radical. So I know I'm going to have a radical. And this big number, the big number here, is always under the radical. The denominator tells you which root you are taking, and the numerator tells you which power you are taking. So this means, literally, this problem means the cube root of 8 squared. The cube root of 8 squared. So we really should know what the cube root of 8 is. What is the cube root of 8? We are not using a calculator. What's the cube root of 8? Cube root of 8 is 2. two and 2 uh, squared is 4. So the answer to the problem is 4. We take the cube root of 8 and square it. Now, the next one is exactly the same thing, only it's a fourth root cubed with the 16 under the radical. Anytime you have a fractional exponent, you have got to understand that's a radical. That's a radical. The denominator tells you which root, the numerator tells you which power. What's the fourth root of 16? Two. Two times two times two times two is 16. So the fourth root of 16 is two. So this time we have two cubed and our answer is eight. Now, take a minute and try E by yourself. See what you can do with E. No calculator, see if you can figure this out by yourself. Anybody want to volunteer an answer? Anybody got an answer yet? 16. Let's check that out and see. It's a fractional exponent, so it's a radical. It's a cube root to the fourth power. The cube root of eight is indeed two, and two to the fourth is indeed 16. Nice work. Good job. Anybody have a question about that? All right, let's try the next one. Sixteen to the three halves. Sixteen to the three halves. Is it sixty-four? Let's check it out. This means the square root of sixteen, which is four, and four cubed is sixty-four. Great job. Anybody have a question about that one? Oh crap. Anybody have a question about that one? You all right, Ms. Ford? Oh, I'm fine. I just got too many wires and trying to get the iPad. It's just, it's not too conducive to do all this up here, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Thank you for asking. All right. What's next? That was that one. Good job. Okay, nine to the three halves. All right, somebody new, give me this one. What's this one? Nine to the three halves. Is it 27? Let's check it out. It's the square root of nine cubed. That's three cubed. That's 27. Nicely done. Very, very good. Anybody have a question about that? Beautiful. Uh, oh, yep. Uh, Go ahead. What? Never mind. I think it's... The square root of nine is three. Okay, the square root of nine is three, and three times three times three is 27. This one's kind of easy. What's 25 to the one half? It's 
just the square root of 25, isn't it? So that would be 5. Remember, the denominator tells you which root to take, and the numerator tells you which power. So this is just the square root of 25, which is 5. All right. Now, the next part deals with negative exponents. Well, we've already spent some time with those. So that's not going to be too much trouble for us. 4 to the negative second means what? Now, guys, you got to keep all this straight. Fractional exponents mean radicals. Negative exponents mean something else. What do negative exponents mean? Fractions? Yes, it means 1 over. So 4 to the negative second means 1 over 4 squared. So the answer to this problem is 1 16th. What about 5 to the negative first? Leo, 5 to the negative first. What does that mean? I don't really know how to do them. Okay, I need you to pay real close attention, Leo. I need you to focus whatever else you're doing. Okay. Put it aside. I need you to pay attention. Look at the problem we just did. It was 4 to the negative second. What did we do with that? We made it 1 over 4 squared. So what are we going to do with 5 to the negative first? We're going to make it 1 over 5 to the first. Negative exponents become 1 over. So 5 to the negative first is 1 over 5 to the first, which is 1 fifth. Now, do not be confused by problem C. It just has a little bit of an extra step in it. For problem C, we're going to do this part first. And then whatever we get for that, we're going to multiply by 2. We talked the other day that in exponential expressions like this, you cannot multiply the 2 and the 3 ever because the 3 has the exponent and the 2 doesn't. So do not start by multiplying. Do PEMDAS. PEMDAS says exponents first. So 3 to the negative second, what does that equal? 3 to the negative second. 1 over 9. Yep, it's 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. And you can go straight to 1 over 9. I just put that step in there for people that might be a little confused. Now, we're multiplying here. So put this over 1 and multiply straight across. So our answer is 2 ninths. 2 times 1 over 1 times 9, 2 ninths. Now, the next one is a little bit tricky because the problem starts out with 1 over. Jonathan, you got a guess as to how we'll handle this since it's already 1 over? Uh, you just leave it the same? No, that's a good guess, but no, you actually flip it back over. So it becomes 4 again. If it's already 1 over and it has a negative exponent, you flip it over and make it 4 to the second. So the answer to that problem is 16. A negative exponent is always going to flip your fraction. So if the original fraction, and I didn't think of this as a fraction, but this is 3 over 1, it becomes 1 over 3. If it's already 1 over 4, it goes back to becoming 4 over 1. So the answer to that problem is 16. Now, Jonathan, with that in mind, what do you think I'm going to do with the next one? This is problem E. What do you think I might do with this one? Uh, 
um, flip it over and put the um, exponent on the bottom. Actually, the exponent goes on both. And, and I see what you're saying over here. Th th this was a one, Jonathan. So what's one squared? One. Yeah. So is, if it's a one, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to worry about it because it's not changing. This exponent actually goes with the whole thing. So it actually goes with the four and with the one. I just don't normally write 16 over one. I write plain 16. Here, I don't have ones. So here, I am literally going to have to cube the three and the two. So you're right. Step one, flip it because of the negative. The negative flips it. And now I still have to cube it. Three cubed. Three times three times three. 27. Yes, ma'am. And then two cubed. Don't forget you got to do both parts. Two cubed would be two times two times two. Eight. Thank you. So your answer is 27 over eight. Negative exponents flip you over. So if you're starting out as a five, you're gonna get flipped over. That's five over one, so you're gonna get flipped over to a one over five. If you start out as a one over five, you get flipped over to a five over one. Negative exponents flip us over. All right, what am I ready for? F, all right, this is another one. Do not be confused. PEMDAS. So you're going to start right here. Exponents first. Exponents first. What, um, does this equal? Five to the negative first. What does that equal? Very good. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to multiply those guys together. So one half times one fifth, straight across, the answer to the problem is one tenth. The next one looks a lot like that. And you're going to do stuff in the same order. But, so we're going to start right here. But this is already 1 over. So that negative is going to flip it. And it's going to become 5 over 1 or just 5. And it's to the first power. Now, do I really need to write that first power there? No, because everything to the first is just itself, right? So don't let that exponent confuse you or bother you. Now, straight across, multiply. The answer is 5 halves. Remember, with multiplication, you do not need a common denominator. With multiplication, we just multiply straight across. All right, one more, kind of an easy one to finish. What's three to the negative fourth? Let's see, who can I call on? A tray. What's three to the negative fourth? Uh, don't you have to flip it first? Uh-huh, and you'll make it one third. Then you find the power of that. Okay, so what's one to the fourth? One. Yep, anything, one to anything is one, so that's a real easy one. What's three to the fourth? Three times three times three times three. 36. Uh, be careful. 81. Three times three times three times three. This would make a nine, and this would make a nine. 
So we have 9 times 9, I like 81. I think it's 81. Just be careful with your arithmetic there. All right, so remember fractional exponents mean radicals and negative exponents mean you flip, okay? Now, the next section, part five, puts those two together. So the fraction part is gonna be a radical and the negative part is going to be a flip. I think it's easier if you deal with the negative first. There's really no rule that says you have to, but I think it's easier. So I'm going to start, this is 8 over 1, so I'm going to flip that and make it 1 eighth to the 2 thirds. I'm going to start by flipping my fraction. That's how I'm always going to start when I have a negative exponent. So this was 8, the original problem was 8 over 1, so it's going to flip and become 1 over 8, and then to the 2 thirds power. Now, every time we have a fractional exponent, we think radical. The big number here goes under the radical sign. This number, the denominator of the fraction, of the exponent fraction, tells me which root to take and the numerator tells me which power to take. So this says the cube root of 1 8 squared. Now I am totally not going to freak out. What is the cube root of 1? 4. 4. Any root or any power of 1 is 1. Don't you dare get confused by that. Any root or any power of 1 is 1. Now, what about the cube root of 8? What's the cube root of 8? Two, because two times two times two is eight. And now I'll square it. So I did my cube root of one and my cube root of eight, and now I'll square it. One squared is one, and two squared is four. So the answer to the problem is one fourth. Now, I did a lot of steps there, and that's okay. But certainly, as you get better at this, and some of you may already be there, you do not need to show every single one of those steps if there are things that you can do in your head. All right, let's try the next one. Same thing. And again, I really think it's helpful to do the negative first. Take care of the negative. So that negative is going to flip this 4. This 4 is going to become a 1 fourth. All right. Now, a fraction means a radical. Under the radical is going to be 1 fourth, and I'm taking the square root and cubing it. I'm not going to worry about this. I just take the square root of each piece. So the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2, and now I have to cube that. So 1 cubed is 1, 1 to any power or any root is 1. 1 doesn't change, 1 stays the same. 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the answer to problem uh, B, 5B, is 8, or 1 8, 1 8. Anybody have a question about that? Again, I showed every single step.
Okay, would you try C on your own? And let's see, Katie Shin, I might ask you to offer your thoughts on number three, or C, I mean, problem C. Not an answer yet, Katie, but do you have a thought on how to start this problem? Um, do nine and then to the one half power. Beautiful. So the first thing she's going to do is take care of this negative, which is going to flip this fraction and make that a nine, or if you prefer, a nine over one. It flips over, becomes a nine. And now it's to the one half power. Now what, Katie? You're right on target so far. Good job. And then do you do, you, uh, do three squared to the one half? Uh, you actually can. We haven't been doing that uh, because eventually you're going to have to do a radical. So I would just I would just do the square root of nine to the first, and the square root of nine is three. But if you rewrote this as three squared to the one half, you could actually multiply these exponents because that's what you do when you have a double exponent and they would cancel each other out and leave you with three as your answer. So yes, you can absolutely do that. We have not done any that way, but you absolutely can. Either way, we need to come out with three as our answer. All right, here we go. Farrell Henderson, how do you want to start letter D? Uh, flip it. Yep, 27 over eight. exactly. You're going to make it 27 over 8. That's absolutely beautiful. 27 over 8, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now, what does that one-third mean, Miriam? Miriam? Yeah. Do you know what that one-third means? A fractional exponent. 27 square root 1, 27 eighths inside the radical three over one. Yeah, yeah, to the first. That's exactly right. So a, a one-third exponent means a cube root. So she's got her radical sign. It's a cube root. Under the radical is the 27 eighths, and we're taking it to the first power. Basically, you don't need that one because when you take something to the first power, it just doesn't change. So Cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of 8 is 2, and that is our answer. Nice job. Nice job. All right, 827 is negative one third. Okay, so now we've got 27 to the negative two thirds. Oops, we just lost somebody. Who'd we lose? All right. Who's got um, a thought on this one? 27 to the negative two-thirds. Um, flip over the fraction. So instead of 27 over 1, we're going to think of this as 1 over 27. To the two-thirds power. To the two-thirds power. Very good. What does that two-thirds power mean? It means uh, the square root of 1, 27. Root of the third, the cube root of 127 to the second power. Exactly. So anytime your exponent is a fraction, you guys, think about a radical. 
think about a radical any time your exponent is a fraction. All right, cube root of 127. Cube root of 1 is 1. Remember, any root of 1 is 1. This is 4. Yes. I have a question on that. So uh -huh. how come we didn't do the 2 in the, when it's like at 1 half? Like on like different problems than we do like other numbers. Like in front of the radical. Like how the 3 is there? Yeah. That, that is always the denominator. The denominator of the, the fraction. Two when it's the denominator. What? What did you say? It's just two. If, if it's a square root, so if you have 25 to the 1 half, that means uh -huh. the square root of 25. Yeah, but do we not put the 2? Um, well, no. The square, the, the radical sign by itself always means square root. If you okay. want to write it in, you can. But think about on your calculator. When you see that symbol, that's always a square root. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't normally write the two there, but it won't hurt anything if you do. Okay. I just wanted to check. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. So the cube root of 1 is 1. The cube root of 27 is 3. That's one of those very common numbers we should just know. And then don't forget, you still have to square it. So 1 to any power is 1, and 3 squared is 9. So your answer to that problem is 1 9. All right, what am I ready for? Um, all right, let's have you spend a few minutes. There's a whole other column here. F, G, H, I, and J. Let's have a minute, take a minute, and work through all those. See how many of those you can get. Then we'll check them and talk about the ones you have a question about. So you're doing F through J on your own, seeing if you can get any of those figured out, and we'll go through each one of them and answer your questions. I'd like to hear some answers as you get them. Just the answers, shout them out, and um, then we want to compare and talk about. What we've got. They have one A. For which one, F? Yeah. All right. Oh shoot, that marker doesn't work. All right, one eight, good, thank you. Anybody have another answer? All right, none of these markers work, so I'm gonna have to do it in black. Okay, so one eight, that's what we think. I don't know yet. Don't mark anything right, right or wrong. We're just getting some initial ideas. Anybody have a G answer? A two for that one. Two, okay. How about an H? I got 127. Okay. I. Any 
anybody can share an answer. I is one tenth. Okay. Remember, we don't know if these are right. I want you to compare them to what you're getting. And if you don't agree with something, we need to talk about it. I did the last one quick, but I got one thousand twenty sevens. One thousand twenty sevens. Okay, great. Now. I realize some of you may not be done already, you know, yet, but everybody should have number one or number, letter F done. Is this the right answer? Is this what you got when you did letter F? I see some nods. That's great. For those of you, oh, some thumbs up. For those of you that are confused, this becomes one sixteenth to the three fourths. And then it's the fourth root of 1 16th cubed. So it's the fourth root of 1, the fourth root of 16. You, whoever gave me 1 8, you are spot on. Perfect. The answer to F is 1 8. Now, what do you think about number 2 or number G? Is the answer 2? Uh, Trey, that was a thumbs up from Trey. Let's check it out and see. First thing we're going to do is flip it. So we have 16 to the 1 fourth. This flips. And that's the 4 through to 16, which is indeed 2. Perfect. You guys are 2 for 2. Nice job. Nice job. Anybody want to comment on H? Either thumbs up or thumbs down, anybody? I see lots of thumbs up, like it. So here we go. Flip this, make it one ninth to the three halves. That's the square root of one ninth cubed, and we can put the two here if we want. The square root of one is one, and the square root of nine is three cubed. One cubed is one, three cubed is 27. Yes, you guys are getting this, that's great. Great, great, great. Flip that, make it one over a hundred to the one half. That's the square root of one over a hundred. The square root of one is one, the square root of a hundred is 10, bingo. Anybody have a question about I? It's perfect. This one has a crazy answer, let's see. First thing we do is flip it. So we have 100 ninths to the 3 halves. That means the square root of 100 ninths cubed. The square root of 100 is 10. You're supposed to know that without a calculator. And the square root of 9 is 3. 10 cubed is 1,000, 3 cubed is 27. That answer is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect, good job. Any question about those five problems before I erase them? Now's your chance. The last one. Okay, so we flip it and make it 100 ninths to the three halves. That means a square root cubed. Right. The square root of 10 is, or excuse me, square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of nine is three. So you have 10 over three cubed. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, and three times three times three is 27.
Now, the next section, um, I went ahead and wrote the problem down because uh, you can't be opening your books and all that right now. We've got too much going on already. So we're just, I'll just tell you, we're writing the exponential function. So this is problem or 3.2 number one. Oh, by the way, 3.1 homework will be due Friday. 3.1 homework, that's the section we just finished with all these exponents and stuff, that's due Friday. All right, so now we're on to 3.2. We're gonna write the exponential function. Okay, so remember, this is review from yesterday. That means y equals a times b to the x. That is an exponential function. I'm gonna give you from the book, this is the problem in the book, 0, negative 5 eighths, and 1, negative 4.64. Now, you're going to need a calculator for this problem. Not for step 1, but certainly for step 2. Alright, does anybody remember how to start this? We're writing an equation that looks like this one. Um, a would be negative 5.8. Yes, Katie, thank you for paying attention and remembering. We talked about this yesterday. We always start with the point that has a zero. And remember, I promised you I'm going to give you a point with a zero. Um, so we'll start with this point. It doesn't matter what that number is. That becomes your A. That's your initial value. So now we have y equals negative 5.8 b to the x. This number that's with the zero is always the a. Always. Now there are steps you can go through to work that out, but I'm not going to because it's always a is this number. Now, I do need to work out the next step. Who remembers what that is? Exactly. You all know what to do, several of you chiming in there. Awesome. You know this is your X and your Y. So you're going to put negative 4.64 in for the Y. And 1 in for the X. I'm sorry, we don't need a calculator for this one. We'll need one for the next one, but not this one. Be well, maybe a calculator will help. What's B to the first? Isn't it just B, guys? I don't need that exponent. So now to get B, I'm going to divide. So what is negative 4.64 divided by negative 5.8? 0. 0.8? Just solving for B, dividing both sides. So remember, this is what you were shooting for. This was your job, to write an equation that looked like this one. So your equation is uh, negative 5.8 times 0.8 to the x. Your A was negative 5.8, and we solved for our B, and we got 0.8. Alrighty. Now there's one more like that. So I'll give you the points for it also. The points for problem B, this is 1B in section 3.2. Straight from the book, it says I have 0, 3, and 4, comma 1.49. So 0, 3, and 4, comma, 1.49. And you are writing the equation of the exponential function. Clara Lee, how do I start? Uh, 
Well, you have your A as three. Exactly. And then you want to do plug in the rest of the numbers. Perfect. Hang on. You're, you're, yep, you're doing great. Hang on. I'm going to let you finish in a minute. We'll make sure everybody's up with you. She looked at the point that has the zero and said, okay, there's A. All right, now, what did you want me to plug in, Clara? Um, the 1.49 for Y, and then equals the 3 times 4 X, or is it 1? It's B to the 4. Oh, the X Remember, is that, the X yeah. is 4. The X is 4. That always catches us. We have to be careful. We are plugging in for X and Y. Y and X is what we're plugging in our values for. Now, this problem is a little bit tougher, okay? So I need everybody to have your calculator in your hand and we're gonna go through this. Okay, so we got calculator in hand. Here we go, first thing we're gonna do is divide by three because I've gotta get that B by itself. So I'm gonna take 1.49 and, oops, 1.49 and divide it by three and I get some big long decimal, which is fine. I'm not gonna write it all down because I'm gonna show you what to do now to get your answer. So this big decimal should be sitting here on your calculator now, right? That big decimal is what you have on your calculator. Now we talked about this last time that to get B by itself, which is our goal to figure out what the B is that's gonna go into the equation. I am gonna to have to fourth root both sides. Okay? Now, there are a couple of different ways to do this, but I think the easiest way is to remember that a fourth root means one-fourth power. So I will simply press, nothing else, I will simply press my little carrot button, this button right here. That's how I raise to a power. So it's going to take that decimal, you don't retype it, don't retype it, it's right there. Just hit the carrot button and then 0.25, because that's the power you're raising it to. So if you got B equal to 0.839, I'll round it off, you are right, you did it right. Now I'm gonna show you another option. Honestly, this is the way I always do it. For me, this is the easiest, but it may not be the easiest for you. So I'll show you the other option. All right, so I'm, I'll, I'll stop here and let you get that written down if you, you want. But then I want everybody to come back to your calculator because we're gonna go through the other way to do it. Okay, so I gotta go back to this step. So I need you to do 1.49 divided by three again so that you have this big decimal as the last thing on your calculator. I just, divide, I just divided this again. I'm doing the problem again a different way. So 1.49 divided by three. So now I have this big decimal and I have to four through it, okay? So if you press your math button, right here where my big fat finger is there, the math button, you will notice down the way, number five for me, there is a button that looks like this. Everybody find that button in your math menu? Don't press it. It's okay if you do, but we'll just have to back up. Okay, so I'm going to use that button because that is the button that will take a root of my number. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my home screen. So I'm going to second quit, second quit. So now I still have my big long decimal there. If you're going to use that button, the first thing you type is this number. 
So type four, just type four, go into your math menu, so just press your math button, go down to number five, or whatever number this is for you, you want that key right there, press that. Now you can either type in that whole big decimal because that's what you're fourth rooting, or you can just hit second answer, which is right down here above your negative button. That will pull that number down and you get 0.839, you get the same thing. There are going to come times in these problems at the end of the chapter, the word problems, where you are going to need to take roots of numbers. Your two choices are, you either use this button, and we just walk through those steps, or you convert the root to a fraction. I like to do that, it's faster for me. But either way, we come up with B is 0.839. So the answer to the question, after all that work, is right here. A was three, so we have Y equals three times 0.839 to the X. All right, if you have issues with your calculator, if you cannot get this answer either way, then you probably ought to come to Flex at two o'clock with your calculator and we can walk through it so that you, you don't have to know both ways, but you gotta figure out which way you're gonna do it because you do have to be able to get that 0.839. Okay, everyone, you've done great today. Um, so I guess I'll see you, I don't know when, homework's due Friday, uh, and come to Flex if you want. See ya, have a good day. Bye-bye. You're welcome, bye-bye. Bye-bye.